All right, everybody. So we've talked a little bit about what the save on blur does. Now let's take a look at what's involved here and what uh, the files involved. So let's take a look at the HTML part first. What we have here is we're taking advantage of something that's pretty new, uh, I believe, in HTML5. And that is the ability to add um, what we call data attributes to a uh, HTML tag. And you can pretty much add this to anything, I believe. But we're going to add it to the uh, input or text area, um, basically form element tags. And what this allows us to do is just send more data in the form than just the value, the thing we want to change. So what I've done here is, in order to tell the um, the page that this, uh, this particular field is going to be a save on blur, we simply give it a class of blur-save, which then will attach it, the JavaScript to this, uh, which will make sense here a little bit later. Then we have these other attributes, this data ID, we have this set up. What's going to go here as the value will be the ID of this, um, the record in the database. So let's say we're editing a user. So um, if my user ID is one in the database, then this would be data ID equals one. So now we know which user to affect. Now data label, this is uh, not necessarily uh, and this is kind of uh, optional. This is for notifying us once something's been saved, and we'll mess with that later. But then data-db for database, I've got this set up so that we can send the table name, so in, in this case, users, and the field that we're affecting. Um, let's just say we're going to change my first name. So this field would be First, I believe is what we called it. If we go to users, yeah, so we have first and last. And so all this data gets sent when the blur event happens, when you click off of it, tab out of it, etc. It'll load the Ajax file that then runs the query based on the information that we've put in here. So let's take a look at that. Here is the JavaScript. Now this first area here this is something that I have um, set up for uh, this with the CSS. Um, this also is optional. This just kind of creates an effect that shows that we are editing a field. Um, because originally, I think in this version, I have stripped out the border um, and kind of inset of a, of a field. So it's just a, it's borderless, backgroundless. Um, and what it does is, I've got it set so that when you do click on it, it just makes everything bold and puts a border around it. Um, like I said, that's just visual. That's for show. This is not important. This part here is the important part. Like everything in jQuery, we need to um, identify what we're going to be working with here. And that would be anything with the class name blur-save. So in our example, the we're going to change the user's first name we add that class to that field, and now it knows to trigger this. And that's what happens here on blur, do this. And what we're doing here is we are grabbing that information that we, add, that we uh, put in there with that data attribute. And so we're saying, okay, grab the ID, and we'll create a variable in JavaScript called ID. Same with the label, and same with DB. And then, of course, we grab the value uh, that's been inputted. So if I change my name from Alan to Alex, then this here variable would equal Alex. And then the next part here, this is similar to what we did up here. This has to do with the visual aspect. Since we add a class that gives it kind of a, a border and make it makes it bold, we also want to remove that once we've clicked off of it to kind of show that we're not editing this anymore. So this line right here is also optional. The next line, this is the most important part. This is the Ajax end of it. We run the uh, get method, which is going to look for a file we have in here. 
in our Ajax folder called blur-save.php. And we're going to send all those values to the URL, which will then trigger that PHP. Now, this right here, this is going to be what is returned um, on the page, what, what is loaded on this blur-save.php. And this gives us an option to send a status back, which I can't remember if we've done this in uh, previous Ajax uh, videos or not. But this kind of comes in handy. This will help kind of make the notification window or however we do that, um, et cetera. So let's go back a folder here, and let's take a look at that Ajax. So open up this file, and uh, a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory, knowing what we know now. Um, we load up the uh, database connection so we can edit the database, and of course this is in the Ajax folder, so we need to do the dot dot to go back a folder. Um, I'm turning off error reporting uh, or actually I'm turning off only the notices because I don't want that being returned because that becomes part of that uh, that uh, return status and we don't want that and I'll get into that later. Now we're going to grab, uh, I have this mis misworded here, it should be git, but um, the values that are being sent through the URL, we need to grab those and we're just storing them in an easier to remember variable. Um, same thing down here, but what we're doing um, is we're sending the, since we're sending the table and the field together, and uh, I have a reason for doing it that way, because I could just add another data attribute, one called table, one called field, um, but I'm not. So we need to separate these two. So we're going to use the explode function in PHP, which is going to say basically create an array and we give it a delimiter, which tells it how do we separate this up into pieces of an array. So we say that the uh, dash is the del delimiter. So we can now extract those two pieces. And that's what's going on here. We create an array called DB, and it automatically generates a key of one and zero, or zero and one, sorry. Zero being the first thing it finds, which will be the tail name, and one being the second thing it finds after the dash which will be the field name. And so now we have those separate. Um, now in the JavaScript, we also sent an action to tell it we're going to save something. So we run a query. This query's got a bunch of variables in it so that we can use this over and over. We do a select field. So we're just pulling that field from the table where ID equals ID. Now this... Uh, the reason we're doing that is we want to see what the current value of the field is. Um, if, if nothing has changed, then we don't need to go run an update query. For instance, if you clicked on the field but then didn't change anything, you decide, oh, I don't need to change anything, um, this will say nothing was changed, which is what's going on down here. If the value that's being sent and the value in the database is the same or is not the same, go ahead and run the update query. If not, echo out the number three, and that's our status. Three would be nothing has changed. If it is, and sorry, my PHP got a little broken here, then go ahead and run the update query, spit in the uh, table and field and the value and the ID, and then as long as it was successful, send back the number one. So why I did one and three, I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, basically, we can use that to um, decide whether or not to send a notification on the screen that says field was saved. Um, or we could also, if we could send a notification that says nothing was changed, something like that. That's what that's for. So next we'll implement this.